Welcome back to another edition of In the Trenches with Doug Skeen, Michigan's former All Big Ten offensive lineman. This is a happy version of Wisconsin for the first time in three years. Skeen, Michigan, some dominance up front at times in the first first time we see it. 13:58 of the first, and this is a fourth and one play, and a little scary in your own end here. You're trying to set a tone. I understand that smart play probably would have been to punt, but Jim Harbaugh goes for it with good success because of what? Well, Ballas, first of all, I love the fact that Harbaugh put a total trust in his offensive line here. An offensive line got to love this. And clearly here, the right tackle and right guard and center heard the call. Because if you watch what those guys do to the near defensive lineman here, number 95, and that middle linebacker, we just roll them out. I mean, this is outstanding short yardage and goal line blocking here by Stuber and Zinter, the right side. And we roll that defensive lineman almost five yards off the ball. That's really, really good. And Bastardus gets to this middle linebacker here and swallows him up. But it all starts with that right tackle, right guard. What I don't understand on this play is how we're letting number 18, the near side linebacker, go unblocked. And this is the guy that comes in and makes the tackle. Now, yes, we get the first down. That's all we need is a yard. But but I don't understand how you leave a front side linebacker unblocked. So down here at the bottom, Honingford is blocking the stand-up defensive end, this outside linebacker here, 41. And, well, we don't have anybody for the front side linebacker. That's interesting to me, but I really don't care because we do such a nice job on the interior defensive line pushing these guys off. It's an easy first down. Play number two is at 12-12 of the first. It's the next fourth and one play. And this is a disaster. I really like the center and the left guard. Trevor Keegan's had his struggles at left guard at times this year. He gets a nice, does a nice job here. But three, two, at least two other positions on this line, maybe three if you include the tight end, just not good enough here, Skeen. So, Ballas, we have seven blockers here. You got five offensive linemen and two tight ends. I'm going to give a big old fat positive to our center and left guard. They get outstanding movement here on this down lineman. Same guy we rolled out in the previous play we did, the fourth down play. And so those two get a nice job uh, for their efforts. The rest of this offensive line gets a minus on this play in my mind. Left tackle here, Hayes gets just beat right across his face. Obviously, that's the guy that makes the tackle in the backfield. That's not good. I'm not really sure what Eric All here, the left tight end, is doing. It looks like he doesn't know what he's doing. He kind of shuffles out of his feet, kind of puts his hands on this outside linebacker, doesn't really move anything, gets a shoulder, a little bump there, and then stops and watches. Our right tackle here, Stuber, who looked outstanding on the first play, is absolutely getting pushed backwards on this play. And Schoonmacher down here at the bottom gets no push either. So, tail of two fourth and ones here. The first one, outstanding blocking. The second one, five out of seven guys, not so good. And two different results. Got to be better. Got to be consistent on short yardage and goal line going forward. Okay, 9.05 of the first. Actually, I think it's the, yeah, still the first here, Skeen. And I want you to watch a couple things here. First of all, Cade McNamara has not been sacked this year. Somebody on our message board made a very good point that he seems to be getting them in the right plays, understanding where blitzes are coming from. And you kind of see it on this play. You talked about slide left protection here when he sees the corner coming, number one. Number two, uh, Trevor Keegan, a little bit of leakage there at left guard. He's been the weak link on this line. He's got to get better. Number three, uh, McNamara running away from the pressure and watch the move that Blake Corum makes here. Uh, outstanding to get the first down. So protection, protection. sometimes you have to change at the line of scrimmage. I don't know what the protection is here before the ball is snapped. Nobody does. But Wisconsin shows the blitz. This corner plays his card early. And what I think happens here is McNamara sees this. Obviously, he sees it. The offensive line see it. And now we have four defenders because of that corner blitz coming off of our left. And if you watch the right guard, center, left guard, and left tackle all slide to their left, and we have a hat for a hat. The right tackle, Stuber here, is going to take number 41, the outside linebacker, and block him. So we've got the right protection, or we get into the right protection here to adjust for this. This is what you want to see. Now, the actual protection itself, the center here of Astartes is outstanding. He stones this guy and does a really nice job. By the way, I think Vistardis is having an outstanding season here along the way. Our left guard gets a little bit out of sorts, and he's the one who allows the leaker who made us all, you know, maybe pee in our pants a little bit watching this game because we thought we were going to take a safety. Left tackle's clean on this. 
we are blocking this pretty clean, except for the left guard. But the good news is McNamara keeps his composure, slides around in that pocket, and finds his little safety route here to Corum. And then Corum, who's given up probably 30 or 40 pounds to this outside linebacker, 41, comes in, drops his shoulder, and does his absolute perfect Mike Hart imitation and falls forward for the first down. That's really good, tough football. Okay, fourth place, 704 of the first. And a couple things here. Watch the push on the left side of the line here, Skeen. Uh, number one. Number two, I didn't think Blake Corum was very patient. You pointed this out. He cuts it back. But look at how, how they're blowing these guys off the ball here. And if he's patient and follows his blockers, I'm thinking he's getting a little bit more here instead of getting popped like he did. Well, so, you know, in our podcast, I mentioned one of the things I noticed. I thought Corum got a little impatient at time and, and broke the ball back where it had he just stayed with his block where the blocks were going well, he would have had more room. And this is an example of it. You watch the right tackle here. Stuber gets really nice push. The right guard center, really nice push. But Stardis, I mean, we are blowing dudes off the ball. And you got Honingford in here doing the same thing. We are blocked guy for guy all the way across this offensive line. Keegan at left guard, Hayes over there at left tackle. It looks really, really good. So why is Corum breaking the thing back over here? He obviously saw a window for a second there. There was some room being led by Henning, number three. But good grief, does that thing uh, uh, close quickly? Because the corner, who's got no pass responsibilities to the bottom of the screen, number one from Wisconsin, comes up and drops a bomb on Corum, followed by the safety here. Now, Henning is supposed to come up here and get this safety. Henning comes up, stops his feet, and absolutely gets drilled. He's going to get killed if he keeps doing that. you got to come up here and lay some wood yourself, dude. But this is an example of a decent play, maybe average, but I think it could have been better had we gone left. And Corum, show a little patience. Your offensive line is blocking well. Get behind those big old backsides and just follow it up in there. It'll be a safer four or five yards than taking a massive shot from their corner like he did. Okay, 427 of the first. This is the flea flicker. This is play five already. And uh, watch the play action here. Explain to me why you love to play action when you're a lineman, Skeen. So when you're play action lineman, uh, offensive line play, you, you got to fire off the ball and you got to make it look like it's a run play. But then you get the luxury of getting those hands on a dude, just sinking your butt down on the ground and just holding him there at the line of scrimmage. Bowles, I'm telling you, that was a guaranteed positive on the play sheet every time. And whenever we ran play action, we would just call, kind of look at each other in the huddle like, yes, this is going to be a positive on my grade sheet. And I'm going to get a better chance of getting in the Victor's Club for doing so. And so we always used to love play action. But this has done really, really well. Uh, Schoonmacher does a nice job here looking at him. Look at the, at the bottom of your screen here, the right tight end. Picks up this defender, number 18, walks in here late. Uh, he picks that thing up. We're blocked clean all the way across the board. There's room to throw. Obviously, the play action worked. The flea flicker worked. A beautiful throw by this quarterback and a great catch and touchdown. Perfectly executed. They play six at 14-10 of the second. This is where everybody's wondering why you're running a sweep with your, your big back instead of Blake Corum here, number one. But number two... You talk about the footwork here with the tight end. This is your lead blocker here on this play, and this just can't happen. So, Ballas, if I'm a left tight end here, Schoonmacher, I got a guy playing outside eye on me, maybe head up outside eye. I've got to base block this guy. I'm going to take my left foot and, and move it toward his outside armpit, and I'm taking my eyeballs to that outside armpit. For some reason, our left tight end here steps with his right foot on a toss sweep. The defense is the defensive end. His his instincts. He's immediately looking to get to his defensive right. Schoonmacher is absolutely out of position here because he takes a terrible first step, and he's backwards because he takes a huge first step, and then his second step is way too big. That defender easily shucks him, and that's the guy that makes the play in our backfield. So, and Hayes because of it can't get around clean. And then Eric All here is not getting any push on his ISO block on the edge. This is a this is a jailbreak mess over here on this toss sweep. You got to you got to block this thing clean, and we got two dudes running free. And of course, it's it's just a mess because we can't get the right angles. And you're going to run toss sweep here, Ballas. The point that I'm making here is your footwork had better be really really good to get to those targets. You got to hook those guys and seal them to the inside. You cannot take false steps. And you know where that gets fixed, Ballas? 
in walkthroughs and in practice. The coach who's coaching the tight end group needs to make sure that there's no doubt in their mind where their feet go on the very first move because against a good defense, one false step will create a negative play, and that's exactly what happened right there. Next play, 1048 of the third quarter, and this is a nice pass. Everybody's talking about, hey, he didn't hit him in stride, and, and he's, you know, he had to wait for it. Roman Wilson with a nice catch here. However, he is about to get hit as he releases this ball, and he does get hit right after he releases this ball. Tell us why here, Skeen. So watch the safety here, number of eight for Wisconsin. Again, they play their cards and their blitzes. He's walking up and at the line of scrimmage, near the line of scrimmage, and what's going to happen is they're going to take their right outside linebacker, bring him into our offensive left B-gap inside the uh, garden center, our garden tackle. They're going to take this three technique and bring him inside and toward Vistardis, and they bring number eight and wrap him around the edge. So it's like an end tackle safety, almost like a twist. Technically, it's a blitz because it is the safety coming. It's not a defensive lineman. And we blocked this thing really well across the front, except at left guard, we get our shoulders turned, and we don't square up this defensive outside linebacker coming right into our face. And this is the guy who causes our quarterback to have to get rid of it. He sees this opposite color getting closer and closer to him, and he's got to get rid of it. So, yeah, it's a little underthrown. Thank God Wilson makes a hell of a catch and adjustment in the air on the ball. That's a great play by that kid. But this is almost ballast. It's so close to being so well blocked. We Maybe we hit him in stride and we walk in the end zone if he doesn't have to get rid of the ball here so, so quickly. we got to clean this stuff up. We've got to clean this stuff up here in this defensive line, uh, linebackers and safety blitzes. You can't let your quarterback get hit with consistency like this. We saw what we did to the opposing team's quarterback early in the third quarter. The law of averages will work against us as well if we keep getting this guy hit. we got to keep him clean. So left guard, you got to be better on this going forward. Okay, second to last play, 945 of the third. I want you to watch the blocking on the right side of the line here, Skeen, and tell me what you see. Blake Corum here, again, got to be a little more patient here because if he does, this thing could go the distance. I believe we score a touchdown here if Mr. Corum, who's a really nice, tough little back. I like him a lot. If he follows the block of his center, right guard, and right tackle, I think we get in the end zone here with the way he, he's tough-ass little Corum here, runs his football. If you watch the Stardust and Zinter, they get a nice push in there. Stuber is up underneath and about to pancake a dude. But yet, Blake Corum breaks this thing to the right, and that allows these linebackers to slide around and away from their defensive linemen who are about to be pushed into their lap and come over here and make a tackle. And he's got, he comes over here, and I think number nine, who's this number nine, this corner or safety, whoever this kid is, we got no one to block him. So if Corum just keeps this thing up in the middle, I think we power this thing in this end zone. That's outstanding here by Stuber. And Honigford's doing a nice job, gets a little push in his gap block, and we're making good movement here. And I'm guessing that Mr. Coach uh, Mike Hart here is telling his young back, watch what these guys are doing, exercise a little patience, let them grind it out. I'm telling you, if he kept it front side, I think I think Stuber would have had a pancake in the back of the end zone, uh, blindside style. That's really good up front there, and I think that we could have absolutely scored. Okay, 8.40 of the... Third, this is the touchdown, and I want you to watch. I think it's 8.30 of the third. What This is the touchdown. Two things I want you to watch. Number one, what your running back does here to secure the touchdown. Number two, the reaction. You brought this up to me, Skeen. Exciting to watch as they take control of this game. Ballas, short yardage and goal line. The difference between this game and games earlier in the season, I'm thinking of the Washington game specifically, where we had a very similar distance to get in the touchdown and get in the end zone here. The entire Michigan offensive line here is four-point stance, hips and shoulders ready to go, face mask about six, eight inches above the turf. We're about to grind this thing out and get you in the end zone. This is a touchdown recorded by a quarterback, but all the credit really goes to this offensive line. And Hassan Haskins gets on the backside of his quarterback, drives his hips, and absolutely powers his his legs to push this thing in the end zone. And, yes, he had help here with Sandra Still, 
and he, and Keegan gets around here and gets a push as well. I love it. I love this ballast. This is progress and improvement in short yardage and goal line. But what I love even more is if you let the television copy run here, Big Stuber gets up off the ground. The guys are helping each other get up off the ground. They're celebrating together and an enormous amount of emotion and happiness. And these guys are fired up and they just walked Wisconsin back in their end zone again. This is the kind of stuff that I can tell you myself, other former players, fans, we love watching this and this kind of excitement and emotion and celebrating together because we haven't seen this in the last few seasons. This team has got something going, and this is evidence of it, and they just got to keep it going, Ballas.